Yo, what's up? I'm actually not driving for a handful of you morons get mad at me for uh, periscoping and driving, which has happened before. I am sitting here. I'm going to go grab a bite to eat. I actually, uh, uh, I had my brother-in-law's wedding yesterday, and then I thought I was going home with my wife, but I had to fly out to LA to a media day, so my flight was later in the day, so I kind of uh, did hung out in Kansas City today, played some disc golf, and I... I I gotta come to you guys. I think you guys are reading my title and you're laughing. Um, are boxers actually good at boxing? This is just something I, I've been struggling with, and I actually brought it up a few podcasts ago with Front Row Brian on the Front Row Funky and FRB show. Is man, Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder both didn't start boxing till way, way, way later in their lives, like 20, 21 years old. And now this fucking Pauly and Artem thing happens. And, and listen, I get it's bare knuckle boxing. I get that it's not exactly the same as boxing, but shit, it's close enough. That's like freestyle and folk style wrestling. You know, it's just something similar. And so, you know, I was thinking about times in my life where I've seen younger good athletes go against guys who are actually world champion level. And it's never went well for someone who wasn't world champion level. And so obviously, Pauly, multiple time world champion over many, 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 many years, many years. Uh, I looked at the, he held one belt for four years, another belt for five years. E either way, he held both belts for quite a long time. My flip flops, look at that, boom, right there. Uh, can you see this says funky on them, custom made, awesome flip flops. Um, okay, so I get that Pauly retired, but he was a world champion. Now, Artem. I went back to his record to make sure he was as bad as I remembered him being. And the, the fact is, he's as bad as I remember him being. He stinks. It, this wasn't like he did MMA and had great stand-up, but struggled on the ground or always got taken down or had great hands but couldn't deal with kicks. Uh, it, it wasn't anything like that. It was like he was a very average mixed martial artist. Average is... Uh, and that might, that might even be giving me a little too much. So, how can a guy like that, who's not even great at stand-up and mixed martial arts, go to beat a guy who was a world champion in boxing? And the answer to me it seems that people who box must just not be that good at boxing, okay? Now, before you say I'm crazy, obviously, I realize there is a world champion in boxing. Paul was one of them multiple times. Um, and so when I think about competing or competition, it's like, okay, if you're a woman and you weigh 145 pounds, you'd be top three in the world in the UFC's featherweight division. Why? Well, there's only three of them. Oh, I'm sorry, there's only two of them. If you added one more, there would then be three. So with some things, when not a lot of people do them, then it's very easy to reach the top, right? Because there's not a lot of competition. And so I was thinking, hey, this must be the case with boxing. I, I don't know what the numbers are like in boxing. I, I really don't. I haven't studied the, done my research. So I'm, you know, I'm throwing this out to you guys. Uh, I don't care if Paul hasn't boxed in years. The world champs are effing world champ. I've seen it in routes. I've seen old world champions come in and just do nasty things uh, to guys who don't know what they're doing. I've seen it many, many, many times. Um, so yeah, so maybe, question is, are boxers good at boxing? I don't know. I'm starting to think that they aren't very good at boxing. That's all I got for you guys. I'm gonna eat a little food, then I'm gonna go to the airport, and then I'm flying to LA, and I made sure that idiot George is gonna stay away from me and not try to attack me and ruin our fight, which is now 13 days away. And that's it. I'm gonna beat up George, I'm gonna call up Marty, and then hopefully we get Marty. In, in due time, listen, Marty and Khabib, Marty and Khabib, Marty and Colby, they, they ruined their their chance to get it together. Uh, who the hell is Boston Salmon? That's a funny ass name. Um, Marty and Colby ruined their chance to get it together. I'm gonna come in there. I'm gonna cut a mean promo on Marty. And Marty's gonna sign the damn contract. I'm out of here. Peace. Uh, this one's from Dustin. He says, so Johns has never been a huge draw. He's been a tier. John Jones? Yeah, under a, the big three. But now with his reinstatement and vow to stay active, it seems his pay-per-view numbers are dropping. I don't know if that's true, but now I'm a massive fan of Jones' personal life notwithstanding. Will we not see a talent of his caliber for a long, long time? 
We will not see a talent of his caliber for a long time. But it seems that he's becoming the mighty mouse of the light heavyweight division just due to the gap between him and his opponents. If you were Jones or his team, would you try to bring back the nastiness and ferocity of Jones pre-Gus or just continue to dominate in a fashion that many casuals will lose interest in very quickly? Uh, I don't agree with anything this guy just said, by the way. That's the worst question I've ever heard in my life. It's terrible. It, it was very, very long, long-winded. You read it all. Like There was like there was some real, like, something worth hearing. I'm sorry. Whoever sent that question <laughs> in, I'm refusing to accept it. I'm refusing to answer it. I'm refusing to talk about it. John Jones is a big draw. He's one of the biggest draws in the sport. But that long-winded question, you want to ask questions like that, go to MMA.TV and go to the underground. And on there, a bunch of little nerds can all discuss that type of stuff. If you've got a good question for us that we can talk about, something to do with life, something about MMA, something that's good, not bloody just just hypothesizing and basically talking shit about one of the greatest of all time well, okay i'm not prepared to do that lewis i'm not gonna shit on jones either i mean look his pay-per-view numbers are decent they're not they're not mcgregor rousey brock who nobody is those guys you're talking about very much standouts right but john jones well above the average um headliner yeah, no, no, for sure well and well, also, his last fight against gustafson i think did like eight hundred thousand yeah, buys great. that's very very high the the idea that Jones is going the way of um, Mighty Mouse. No, Mighty Mouse never really had competition. That was the problem. Is there wasn't enough? There wasn't enough of a story built in that division yeah. to really give Mighty Mouse that like real push. Like, oh my god! So it was just sort of an afterthought how good Mighty Mouse actually was. Joe, that's that division, the light heavyweight division, is so fucking storied. Do you understand? When I became a fan of MMA, like a real fan, a hardcore fan, that's when Chuck Liddell, Randy Couture, they were having their feud. Tito was right there. That was what made the, the MMA. That was light heavyweight division was what made. Yeah, for sure. And then yeah. when Michael Bisping joined in the Ultimate Fighter. That was it. That's when I started orgasming every time I started watching the TV. Yeah. So we're talking about the the biggest division in the history of the sport at the time, um, who Jones then came and cleaned out completely. It's not the same thing and to be honest with you i agree that jones isn't necessarily where mcgregor's at I, and i've said this before on the show if john's jones moved to heavyweight and dominated the way he does i think that's what would, would, would push john jones over the edge and it would turn him into it, he could sort of reinvent himself he could maybe shake the steroid thing a little bit um just becoming that you know forever heavyweight boxers heavyweight fighters when you say pound for pound, that's what we're talking about. It's the biggest, baddest dude on the planet. I think John Jones, honestly, is talented enough to go and win the heavyweight title. He yeah, really is. I agree with everything you just said. There's no conversation here. Everything you said is fact. Everybody knows John Jones is one of the best in the world. The only person to beat Daniel Cormier is John Jones, and he did it twice. Okay, Anyone out there that's hating on him, they can hate on his antics. They can hate on the peakograms. They can't because that's a valid point. But in terms of his performances inside the octagon, you can't hate on that. And then you can't hate on his pay-per-view numbers either because his pay-per-view numbers have generally been very, very good. Uh, I think going forward, though, the climate is very, very different. Now with ESPN, they have bought the pay-per-view buys. I, I, I saw somebody talking about it online the other day saying apparently, apparently, um, ESPN now are guaranteeing UFC 500,000 buys per event. I think Brendan Sharp was talking about this. I don't know where he got that, but if that's true... Then, um, then, then, then that's a fantastic deal for the UFC, and it kind of takes the pressure off all the fighters anyway. Yeah. Now, if UFC, if, if that is true, Brendan Sharp was talking about it at length, hating on the UFC and hating on Dana as he always does. But you know, them two have got a, a highly contentious relationship, so right. I guess that's just the dynamic. But that's what he was saying. I don't know if that is true, but that's what Sharp was saying. And if that is the fact, then yeah, that's going to take the pressure off the fighters because now ESPN are paying. You know, half a million buys for every event. Jesus Christ, that's a great number. For well, every single event. Well, now you have the UFC, who's been this marketing machine, brilliant marketing machine for a very, very long time. Um, I, I have so much respect for what the UFC has done in terms of building a brand from something that was considered barbaric 20 years. Like, I, I mean, 20 years ago, it was literally considered one of those barbaric things you could ever do. It was illegal in almost every state. Um, and they built a real brand. Now they come and they tag team the marketing and respect of ESPN. And I think that's what ESPN is sort of banking on. They're going like, well, you know what? The UFC's done a great job. Well, now let's come together and legitimately build this brand together. We are the most respected sports entity in the world. Um, I think it's a good deal for everybody involved. I think it's going to be good for the fighters overall. I think it's great, obviously, for the UFC. Um, but I think ESPN is banking on the fact that they see what the UFC has done by themselves with really no major marketing partners. I think they can go and bring it to the next level and make it bigger than boxing. And I think that's sort of the angle there. I think they're banking on the fact that they can do 
over a million pay-per-view buys every single time they do a pay-per-view. Yeah, no, 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 for sure. Um, and I was listening to what you said, but my mind did drift a little bit to uh, Amir, Amir Khan, the boxer. Right. Uh, so, as I said, I was hanging on your every word. Right. But last night, and perhaps this is, I mean, because I, mean, I, I feel like right now we're just filling our time for the sake of filling our time. Do you Not know? at all. I was making one of the best points ever. I, I, I just shits on the I, 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 I really that I'm do feel, I like, we, 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 we've had this conversation a million times. Do you want to know the next question? You don't. No, I don't. You don't. I don't. Read a couple I words don't. of it. The fucking questions were terrible. Read the, read, read the, just the title of it. <laughs> we got to put some time. <laughs> what? That's what Harrington sends us. Yeah, all right, I'm going to read this out, okay? Because good, at least there's some entertainment. Because right, no, no offense, you know. <laughs> you're never going to work for the UFC, right? <laughs> hey, guys, I just want to say, UFC, if you're hiring, you're the best thing ever. Blah, 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 blah. I, I know I'm never going to work for the UFC. <laughs> Do you think that's my angle I'm here? I'm joking, I'm joking. I, I met hey, with Fox when the UFC first got the deal. They brought me in. I had a suit on. I felt like an asshole. I literally walked out. I fired my manager after Where that Where was meeting. this at? This is uh, West Side Highway. Uh, what do you mean, West? Uh, in New York City. We met for Fox with the, like the head. Oh, you did? The head to try to get me in there as like a fucking analyst type guy. All right, I have two questions uh, for Bisping and one for Louis Bisping. Number one, uh, a few years ago in Vegas, a close friend of mine was fighting in one of those local MMA shows. I won't say the name of, uh, I won't say the, name of the event. I'm not trying to give him a plug. My buddy asked for you for an autograph. And you quickly replied, that was awesome, by the way. I want everyone to notice Michael Bisping <laughs> dropping your cup. Um, Very clumsy. Uh, my buddy asked you for an autograph, and you quickly replied, fuck off, bitch, and stormed off. <laughs> <laughs> Does that ring a bell? If so, great, because he should not be bothering a celebrity Lewis. such as yourself in Vegas whilst out and about. Wow. See, this is, see, this, this is what you people don't realize. He pretends that he's a man of the people, but when asked... For an autograph, you say, fuck off, bitch. Me? Yeah. No, this is you. This is me? This is you, you psycho. Oh, hold on a minute. What <laughs> do you mean? It's you. <laughs> a few years ago in Vegas, I was <laughs> saying, man was fine. <laughs> Buddy, as for an autograph, quickly ran, fuck off, bitch, stomped off. Does that ring a bell? It's so great. No. It so doesn't. Bisping. <laughs> Bisping says he's a man of the people, says he's approachable, says he's one of you, a blue collar, just fucking Brit. But then somebody asked for an autograph in but, Vegas. In uh, well, 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 I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. That's not how I talk. I never say fuck off, bitch. That's not in my vocabulary. That's yeah. not how I talk. So say fuck off, mate. I say, oh, do me a favor, fuck off. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? No, mate. Sorry, pal. I wouldn't say, hey, bitch. I'm not American. I don't really use that word too often. Can I defend you on this? Because there's got to be more to that story. So, so yeah. I've watched a, you interact a. with fans a million times. So there's two things. Number one, it's probably late night Vegas. You're probably hammered, which is hilarious. Two, I made. Of, I made, If I did say those words, I'm kidding. I, I'd have said it. Oh, sorry, mate. Fuck off. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I don't sorry, want... pal. Meaning no, but having a laugh. There, trying to give you a little cheeky interaction. Trying to give you a story to tell. Do it with a smile. We'll all have a laugh. We'll have a fun here. But it's late. I'm in Vegas. I'm not doing pictures. You yeah. know what I mean? I mean, I've watched you literally interact with fans a thousand times, and you don't even get annoyed by it. You just, you know, if you don't have time, you don't have time. But, um. That guy, here's the thing, this is what happens. Everybody wants to have a cool story. Everybody wants to have like their, their version. So his version of the story is Michael Bisping told him to fuck off one night and, and you know, it's a very whereas your version of the story is just some you were just throwing away a line with a fan My and fucking around. Story is I don't actually recall it. You know, so. it never happened. Yeah. This guy's a liar. Guys. This guy is a rapist. If, you, if, you, if you're going to send stories in or questions, please have them factual. What's his next question, though? What's the question for, for me, you? Uh, we played Fortnite a while back, and it was super fucking cool that you actually game with us fans. You might remember me, Ozark Rage. I do. We got a dub in squads, which is two of us. Do Fuck you yeah. really remember Ozark Rage? I swear Rage. I do. Ozark Rage. I don't play with that many people. He sounds... I'm a man of the people. I remember the fans. What am I Ozark supposed to say? Ozark Rage is his username. Yeah. We got a dub in squads with just the two of us. We stayed close to the storm and got about six kills for the dub. Anyhow, this is a little gay. Uh, listen, I, I, I'm going to ban <laughs> Fortnite talk from here on out going forward. We can't have this. If you want to play Fortnite, great. That's on your own time, right? We don't need to poison the ears of everybody listening. If you want to engage game. in juvenile activity, if you want to play video games with your little hoodlums, with your little earpieces on, I feel like you're in the army, I feel like you're a commando, you know, we spawn, let's go, ooh, Ozark Rage, I'll meet you online in five minutes. <laughs>
you know <laughs> then yeah go for it do you know what i mean yes. but we don't want to talk about it on here. fight no more fine what else you got all right fights this friday Roy mcdonald and neiman gracie it's, so interesting. it's an interesting fight right because Roy was basically like, nah, I don't want to do this anymore. They're like, cool, man. Well, you won. And here's Demon Gracie. He's like, ah, oh, fuck. Well, uh, just playing. I do want to do this. Yeah. So who knows where he's at mindset wise. If Rory is there mentally, he should be able to kind of coast through Gracie uh, with Gracie's stand up. And, and so he's just so far behind. And Rory's impossible to take down. Rory has, you know, very, very good jitsu. So. Even if it were to go to the ground, even if Gracie gets his back, don't expect him to choke Rory out right away. If you remember Rory and Meta Morris, um, he beat the fuck out of that kid who was a multi-time multi, multi -time world champion. Um, so that's your main event. I expect Rory to, unless he doesn't want to be there or unless he's just not um, mentally prepared and makes a huge mistake, and he, he would get choked out, but Rory should win. I'll say via TKO second round. Uh, light heavyweight Machida versus Chael Sonnen. I don't know, man. Two older birds. You never know with Chael. You never know with Leota. I would assume Leota wins. I will say this, though. Unless Chael has a game plan to uh, apply pressure against Leota, you're going to get a boring-ass fight there. That has that has a lot of potential to be very boring and go all three rounds um, unless Chael pushes the pace. Caldwell versus Horiguchi is probably the best fight on that card, to be honest with you. That's great. Um, great fight. Dylan Dennis, Max Humphrey. I fucks with Dylan Dennis, man. He's fun to watch, chokes the fuck out of people, hilarious on Instagram. He's just a character that the sport needs. I think he's actually good for Bellator. He's gonna choke the fuck out of Max Humphrey. Sorry, Max. Um, one I want you guys to pay attention to, and you guys know how balls deep I am into Aaron Pico. He's fighting a guy named Adam Borix. Not an easy fight for Aaron Pico in any facet. Adam, if you look up his history, you look up what he's done before, he is a real problem. This fight doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I feel like Bellator, if Aaron loses one, they're going to jump off the Pico train. The, and it's whoever wins is who they're going to put their uh, eggs uh, into their basket. It's just not a great fight for Aaron. Uh, he has more talent and he has more of an upside, but it's, it's not an easy fight in any facet. When I saw this one, I was like, oh, fuck, dude. Um, just give you guys a little rundown of this kid. So he uh, won his first fight in Bellator via a uh, rear naked choke, and then he KO'd a guy with a flying knee, and then he uh, choked out another gentleman named Jose Lando Silva in the third round. Either way, young, hungry, talented, monster. Aaron Pico, young, hungry, lacking experience, monster, makes mistakes when he gets in there, especially when he gets hit. I don't like this fight for him. He should win, but you never know. The winner of that is their next kind of big up and comer though. I think the, I think Bellator's like, all right, dude, you've lost some big ones. We've put a lot of media behind you. Here's Adam. And it's it's just, I don't know. I don't agree with it. What well, whatever know? happened to uh, Matt Mitrione, Bellator? Oh, good one. Good question, Chin. So my <laughs> sources, uh, Mitrione, his contract's up with oh, Bellator. Snap. So remember, he kicked Homeboy in the nuts. DQ, I think they no contest, right? Yeah. Um, word on the street. When you think about heavyweights, Matt, Matt's a big name still, right? Beat Fedor, even though he lost to Bador. Uh, you know, he's a he's Bador. <laughs> I see it. Fedor, say Bay Bador, together, yeah. uh, Bader, even though he lost to Bader. When you think about Matt and what he's done in uh, Bellator, so he came over there, right? And uh, he won one, two, three, four in a row. Out of those four wins, he beat Fedor, right? Starts Fedor. Uh, I was working that fight in New York City. And then he uh, beat Roy Nelson. They lost to uh, Ryan Bader, you know, as decision. Then has the no contest against Kiritanov. So when you talk about heavyweights in Bellator, Mitrion's top three most famous. Um, so I know they're trying to negotiate, but a birdie told me the UFC sharks are swimming around, trying to make Matt an offer, because think about the heavyweight division in the UFC. Not a lot of big names. Matt has a lot of experience now. He's fun to watch. He's marketable. He played in the NFL, ESPN, NFL. Go together like fucking peanut butter and jelly. Matt's a perfect fit. Matt can talk football. Matt can be on your pre-show, post-shows. ESPN, UFC makes sense that they're going to make him a big offer. One championship. Brandon Vera needs a dancing partner. 
One Championship loves these big white Americans come over and apparently get starched in their in their fucking organization. Well, Matt has a lot of potential. He's exciting to watch. The Asia market would love Mitrion. So I heard One Championship is going to make him a huge offer. So Matt has Bellator, One Championship, and the UFC. And everyone, I, and from what I've heard, UFC is actually offering really good money, and One Championship's throwing the fucking book at them. So if you're Mitrion, you're in a good place. You're in a really good place. I would assume Bellator wants to keep him though, because uh, you know where heavyweight's at there. Uh, a Czech Congo Mitrion rematch would be fun to see. I would assume they match the offers from One Championship and UFC, and Matt doesn't go anywhere. But it's Mitrion, so you never know what you're gonna get. But I hope I just want him to get paid, and it sounds like he is. From what I hear, the numbers are fucking big. Oh, nice. Yes. Uh, what else we got, dude? That's it. You want to just do a couple fan questions? Sure, man. All right. First one. S E V underscore E eight eight. Has Cejudo reached the peak of his cringe, or has it just only begun? Or has it only begun? Um, do you think he's cringy? Uh, I, I, he, he's just trying too hard to entertain the masses. So. I don't need it from him. Like his post-fight speech, that was real. So I fucks with that. I was like, that's him. That's awesome. I'm pound for pound great. Greatest combat athlete of all time. He believes that. I be I actually, I buy it because he, you can tell, like that's what he actually believes. He believes in himself. That's what people, people gravitate towards someone who's, they're in their natural skin, they're comfortable, and they're champions. We gravitate towards that. When he did like the magic trick during the pre-way and stuff like that, <laughs> it's so bad. Yeah. It's like, but it, like, remember when Rothwell tried being like real marketable and was like, <laughs> like that was way weirder to me. It's weirder and it was uncomfortable. Yeah. That was better than what Henry Sudo was doing. <laughs> so I don't know who tells Henry to do this stuff, but his angle should just be kind of the Lomachenko thing. Like I'm the greatest on earth of all time. I don't need to talk shit. I do work, I destroy people, period. What else you got? Um, Axe underscore Black Smoke. Is there a way to relieve the pressure behind the, that eye on the spot? If you uh, ever do that on the spot. You, you can move it. You So you you know that you know when you see guys press that steel, that cold steel down, yeah. that can relieve, like, relieve some, but you can spread it. So you can at least kind of spread it out. So maybe he could have saw a little so he can continue uh, fighting. But you yeah. can move it around. You can move it around. All right, last one, Nebulon underscore Hustle. With Cowboy now losing on this incredible tear that he's been on, do you ever see him gaining a shot at the belt? I no. feel like this is the last ditch. Yeah, ever. no, I, I, don't, I don't think he'll ever get a shot at the belt. That doesn't define Cowboy. It's, it's, and you can't even say that's a shame because Cowboy's career has been so decorated and he's such a fan favorite. It's worked out for him. It's the only guy where it's worked out for him uh, doing the way he does being Cowboy. So. Um, it used to make me upset because I want him to be a world champion so bad, but now it, his career is great, man. His career is cemented. Famous, He's a Hall of Famer. Yeah. He's one of the most top five famous guys in the UFC. People love him because of his attitude. Um, if he would have went another direction and did it the smart way, quote unquote, and waited for his title shot, and he wouldn't be as famous. So it's worked for Cowboy. So shout out to Cowboy. It's worked, man. Yeah. I got another question about Cowboy. Going All Cowboys, huh? A lot of them, a lot of them were about the cringe thing with uh, Henry too. Okay. All right. Goins, Mikey, who do you think Cowboy should fight next or go up to welterweight to try to get a shot? Um, who should Cowboy fight next? Yeah. I think at this point in Cowboy's career, it's all money fights. So, uh, whichever one, the most popular, whichever one brings the, the most attention. Um, I mean, let's see what happens with Anthony Pettis and Nate Diaz. I think the winner of that against Cowboy would be fun. Anthony Pettis versus uh, Cowboy would be fun. Nate Diaz again against Cowboy would be fun. Um, any money fights. I still think Conor versus Cowboy is there no matter what happens. I think um, you could do Conor versus Cowboy in July or September. Not not July, it's ridiculous. Cowboy would take it though. But you could do that like October comeback fight for Conor. Make a lot of sense. Um, just big money fights. That He doesn't need to be fighting these up and comers and you know, the guys we've never heard of and guys making names off of him. You, you don't need that. Gaethje? Um, you know, Gaethje rank five now. That'd be fun. I'd watch it. I'd watch it. That'd make sense for Cowboy. Cool. You want just a real last fun one? Yeah, give me a fun one. Mark, five GTI. Wife wants to know what kind of cologne you were wearing in Cleveland. 
<laughs> that was gravy. I smelled like that was, I spilled gravy all over myself. Well, or go. that was barbecue. Uh, I forget what the cologne is. You don't know people, your cologne. People huh? keep asking. Yeah. I've had the same one forever. It's a black bottle, gold cap. I don't know. Well, there you go. It's fucking, I, I forget. I need to take a picture of it. People always ask me. I forget the name. I don't know. Um, for the the fights themselves, you know, with, with Artem and, and Pauli Malignaggi, um, you know, I, I thought Pauli came out and was fighting the pace of a boxer fighting 12 rounds. I thought he was very tentative at first, just the feel out period. Well, you only have, was it five two minute rounds or five three minute rounds? Is it five threes? Oh, it was five two minute rounds. So five twos. So you have two minutes. So, uh, you know, in other fights, there's really no, there's no feeling out process, which makes this kind of fun. That's why guys get knocked out quicker, um, especially with bearing knuckles. But I thought Polly was in because he has so much experience in boxing. You know, he, he kind of had that kind of feel out process, stick and move, you know, see if Artem, see what he's about, kind of feel him out. When you only have two minutes to get that done, it made for a tentative, boring fight, but I definitely thought he was outclassing him, outpointing him. His footwork was good, rounds one and two. Third round, I thought he definitely kind of won, but then at the end, there was the kind of flurry from Artem. Um, but for as much hype as this got, there wasn't like a clear cut winner. They gave it to Artem. I was like, all right, I can see that. If they get to Polly, all right, that's fine too. But there was no extensive damage done. Both guys was both guys were very tentative. I thought Artem should have just gone MMA style, pure pressure. Polly's not a knockout artist. Apply the pressure, um, make it nasty from round one. Don't let Polly get comfortable in there. Don't let him do his box. Then get the footwork. I don't know what Artem was doing early on, um, and then he started, you know, to kind of get into it. But even then. Um, it was uneventful. I, that's how I, I would sum the, the main event is just like, oh, fuck. Which is probably the worst thing that could happen for Bare Knuckle because if there's a clear cut winner, you can kind of, you know, ride that wave. It'd been more of a, uh, a talking point on all the shows today, even though we're talking about it. But my takeaway from it was, oh, all right, well, I guess that's over. You know, there wasn't anything crazy that happened. Um, and apparently, Paul got paid. I, you know, I, like I said, I, I started my morning off by doing the MMA hour with Luke Thomas, and he asked me about it. He goes, "From what I heard, Paul got paid." Dan, you were in Tampa. Did, you heard the same thing, Paul got paid. I, I heard the same thing. Um, I, I mean, I, I heard I didn't hear a figure, but it was uh, I heard the same thing from like people around his team that it was seven figures. Definitely worth it then. Yeah. Um, and what was your? So you were there just doing what? Covering for Showtime's different brands, Showbox. Um, Polly, uh, Polly's Brooklyn to the World, um, the Nick Turturro's thing, um, Breaking Bread. Uh, yeah, you guys so went all in on kind of just covering. So I wasn't all in on it. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I thought for Showtime, I just thought, I don't know. It, it's still bare knuckle. Or like, there's a lot. I don't know. It, like, if you're a serious fight fan, I kind of, I kind of took a step back and went, I'm gonna watch it, but I'm not gonna analyze this and break it down frame for frame like it's fucking Floyd Mayweather versus Connor here or like fucking a, a Manny Pacquiao versus Keith Thurman fight you know what I'm saying so I took a step back and just for the record you guys are like oh you're tweeting about it. Mm, I don't run the below the belt social media guys that's not me so when you guys tweet at me like oh you're not into it that's not me I don't run any of that I don't do any posting for below the belt I run Brendan shop I run everything Brendan shop let's make that very clear so, um, you know, I'm, I'm glad Polly got paid, really didn't get hurt. I think uh, no one's brand got hurt. I thought, you know, Artem, even competing with a two-time world champion like Polly inside Beer Knuckle, I thought it's a good look for, for Artem. Um, but the, the result wasn't ideal for the Beer Knuckle. Yeah. It was, how, how was that? Was it sold out? Was the crowd it like? Was, it was, I mean, yeah, like they had to open up. They got a lot more uh, media than they were expecting much more they had to open up a whole nother section just for media like upper tier area um yeah like i mean i think everyone everyone every outlet had a person down there mma junkie mma fighting the athletic like, more so than the ufc or yeah like you know Bellator. We, I, I think it says something if esther lynn is down at your shooting your, your event you know esther goes to all the big show box stuff the ufc fights but she's the employee of mma fighting yeah correct? yeah um she's so, the best photographer in yeah, the game, best the game. Yeah. and if she's down there that's love the her mma fighting is sending them down there that's saying something um, it was, it was, but don't you think is it a matter of 
because there was just so much attention so around much it. So much interest. I mean, it's MMA versus boxing in a mixed, like, in a blended rule skill set. And this actually occurred to me after the fight. I was talking with Chuck Mendenhall about this. Who's judging? Are MMA judges scoring this fight or are boxing judges scoring this fight? If it was boxing, probably would have won. Yeah, exactly. Because I mean, so do, do I we know? About, no, no, we didn't recognize like any of the judges. Uh, uh, if, 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 it was, if it was straight boxing judges, yeah. obviously there's going to be crazy bias there. But going off a boxing background, Polly wins three too easily. Yeah. yeah. Off an MMA background, Artem wins. Artem, so it's if, like. If you're looking at significant strikes, you're looking at. I mean, I think. Octagon MMA, control. Octa if you're looking at MMA, like, I don't think defense is scored as much as offense is in MMA. Correct. But sir. like in boxing, it's, it's you know, look at Floyd, you know? Correct. Um, That's why I was like, all right, it could go either way. It could go either way. So it occurred to me kind of during the middle of the fight, I was like, I don't know how to score this. Like, I don't know who's winning. And what was the, what was the, did you have good seats? Yo, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I had good seats because we, we got, we got in like the up close media row. So I was good. And then like Nick and his, uh, was like ringside, Rumble, Rumble Johnson, Rashad Evans were there. And so um, what was the, uh, was the arena like packed? I mean, it was just like a small area. It was like, uh, I'd compare it to a, one of Bellator's smaller shows. Like when they go to like Thackerville, Oklahoma or like Temecula. Gotcha. I compare it to one of those, but like it was and, a good environment. Lots was, of Florida folk for sure. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Florida folk. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, people with three eyes meeting. <laughs> no, just kidding. Shout out to Florida. Um, but what the, and the crowd was obviously MMA crowd too. Cause they were booing the shit out of Polly. It was mostly MMA crowd and they were hard low ball. Fans. I don't think the, I don't think the boxing community communities they're not rallying around this. No. They don't want nothing to do with no. it. Boxing, especially boxing purists, they're elitist, so they have their nose up. I mean, DeGale was Which out I kind of understand. Yeah, James DeGale was out there, though, to support Pauly. He flew across the pond. That was interesting to see him He's out there. He's a stud. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, yeah it's, I think the vibe just from both ends is still kind of like, even the media, everyone's like, this is interesting. <laughs> like, it's just different, you know? I think it's interesting. I think... They're new. They're just new. Um, they weren't expecting this much of a turnout. There's a weird, but there's still kind of a dark cloud over it, right? Yeah. Or am I being a hater? Am I being uh, a hater? But this is, a, let me explain it here, Daniel. The, the reason why I say it's kind of a dark cloud is like, there's no young buck, like up and comer who's doing it. Like when I look at, let's just go through the guys who fought it. Joe Riggs, right? Probably past his prime. Joey Beltron, phenomenal fighter watching the UFC Bellator. Probably past his prime. Um... You know, they had, they had uh, Johnny Johnny Hendricks fought in this. Chris Lieben, past his prime. Dakota Cochran, you know, the, the, you're talking about some real vets. Pauly Malignaggi hasn't fought in two years, obviously way past his prime. Artem Lobov got took from the... So it's like kind of the the, the past their prime guys who, you know, have they made the run in the UFC or Bellator and boxing and, you know, they ran out of options and then now they're here. So I think that's what it is right now. I agree. I agree. I think, um, like kind of what you're saying, it's a bunch of old vets that come from either boxing or MMA, mostly MMA, um, especially the boxing people. They're going to have to get more guys like Pauly to come over because they have, I mean, they have Artem, they have some MMA people that you, we know of. They don't really have many boxing folk that we know of. But here's the thing. Their yeah. entire fan base is it's MMA fans. Entire fan base boxing is, fans aren't fucking with no, it. No, boxing. They hate this. Them. Like you even heard Pauly address it go, yo, man, I, I know boxing said I was too good for this and I'm punching down. Like. It was just something for me to do. And, you know, for me, you know, I was like, why is Polly doing this? And I was like upset about it. Polly's my friend. I think he's the best boxing analyst in the game. He's, he's, he walked the walk. He can definitely talk the talk. And he's just, he's very articulate and he gives a great point of view. And he's so goddamn good at it. He makes great money doing that. I was like, why would he risk all of it to do this? I thought it was going to be a black guy. Um, but probably like the week of, I just woke up. I'm like, why do I care? If Polly doesn't care, what the fuck do I care? Like, Maybe that's what he wants to do and can still be a great analyst. Um, I was worried about him, you know, him getting beat up or his face getting beat up, but no no one's stock went down. No. You know, and Polly made some figures. Hopefully Artem got paid. It's a great feather in Artem's cap to beat a two time world champion in boxing. So and I'm a I'm I I, I like Lobov. I, I I think Artem's a good dude. He's nice. Artem was not really nice though. We had, we even took a Nick who's like a Polly guy. Nick Nick Turo is friends with Polly. He's we were down there mostly to support Polly and just kind of follow his journey there. But Artem was cool. Let us interview him and stuff. Like he was like, "You're Paulie's guy, right? You Italian." <laughs> like, oh well. Uh, so Artem was really chill about it. Uh, I think Paulie's kind of got caught up with the Connor issues. He was still, I think that just kind of eats at him. The, the the tape, the footage, you know, the, the photos came out. Like he's still talking about like release the full footage. Like you know, Paulie's still talking. Yeah, about it's just I think he's got caught up in that, and he sees uh, 
he sees Artem as just a representation of Conor McGregor. Yeah, but they seem, but in this, my other prediction, so my prediction for the fight, and uh, I text Rogan this, I text Luke Thomas this, is I thought Pauly rounds one through three was going to beat the fuck out of Artem. Stick and move, counter punch, probably get him in trouble, maybe knock him down once or twice, and then would hurt his hands, and Artem would take over, make it a dog fight, gets really bloody, Artem wins via decision. I didn't think Artem would win via decision, kind of a boring, non-confrontational fight. I didn't predict that, but I did uh, predict him to win, and I did have my guy put a shit load. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button with its notification bell, and leave a comment in the comment box below of what you thought of the video, and tune in for more on MMA News Outlet.